And today we have our brother Moffat M. Cargo sharing about the man as a mentor. Allow me now to just give you um, um, a bio data of our speaker, uh, Moffat. Uh, brother Moffat is married to Elizabeth and are blessed with two sons and a girl, Ellis, Aaron, and Ivana. Moffat is an accredited mental health professional. He's an adjunct lecturer at Pan-African Christian University. He holds a bachelor's degree in counseling psychology and has a master of arts degree in marriage and family therapy, specializing in child, adolescents, family, and couples. Moffat has also done family therapy short courses at Trinity Western University of British Columbia in Canada. Moffat draws his wealth of experience from working with families and individual clients dealing with a variety of issues, including but not limited to anxiety, depression, trauma, and post-traumatic stress disorder, relationship and family concerns, as well as issues re related to attachment between parents and children. Moffat is a registered member of the Kenya Counseling and Psychological, Psychology Association. He is the founder and clinical director of ProCare Counselors, an organization that offers counseling and psych psychology support services to individual groups, families, and corporate entities. And just the other, the other week, Moffat just finished training a team on counseling here at PBC during a four-week session on Saturdays. And this evening, allow me to welcome our brother Moffat. And let's give him a hand clap of applause as he comes to share about the man as a mentor. And as he comes, I would like the, our senior pastor to come. Pastor Ambrose, if you'd come. And just commit the messenger of the word this evening to the Lord as he shares. Please stretch your hand here as we pray. Father, indeed, we have come to your table. And your table is a table where you serve a word from above. You have brought your servant, our brother Moffat, and dear Lord, we believe and know that today you prepared him for a time such as this, that your anointing may not only rest on him, but flow through him to us as he delivers the word that you have placed in his spirit. Father, we want to say thank you for his family. Thank you, Lord, for his profession. And thank you for the giftings and the talents that you have placed him in your kingdom to serve for a time such as this. And so, Jehovah God, we release that favor and that blessing. And Lord, we pray for ourselves. The Lord, our hearts and our ears may be open to receive that Rima word in this evening. Master, may your Holy Spirit brood and hover upon us and upon the word that will be shared tonight. And Father, we believe that even those watching us online, this word is reaching out to them in a very mighty and very special way. Again, we celebrate your servant and we commit him in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, and God's people say it. Amen. 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 Thank you. Good evening. I, I didn't hear you. Good, good evening. I appreciate the Lord so much this evening. I feel humbled to stand before you. I want to appreciate uh, the leadership of the church, uh, Reverend Ambrose, uh, the leadership of Men Fellowship, for giving me this opportunity to come and uh, share with us what God has put in my heart. Uh, this evening, I am glad because I know that the Lord is going to speak to us. Amen. Amen. 
And this evening, I am so delighted because of having an opportunity to speak to men. You know, I heard somebody say that if you know how hard it is to gather people together, if you, if you want to know how hard it is to, hard, or to or rather to have people together, to gather people together, and especially men, the only people who know how hard it is are the touts. You know, feeling that 14-seater matatu. <laughs> it is hard. And therefore, I take it as an honor for us to just come and uh, be blessed together. I was asked to come and speak about man as a mentor. And um, when I think about my own history, um, where I was born and how I was raised, I can only say that sometimes our families um, give us to the society when sometimes we are so much empty in our hearts as far as life is concerned. When I think about a father and a man for that matter, to have somebody to mentor him, I can only say that it's really hard. I looked for one and I think I didn't get even to guide me and to counsel me as far as my career was concerned. You know, those were the days when uh, after Form 4, you are just, I remember I said I want to pursue a cause which I did not know uh, what it was. And the only thing probably my parents could do is to tell me, go to that Nairobi and look for a cause. Ukipata utuabi, utuambie. So sometimes it becomes hard. And um, I want to begin uh, by a statement made by Helen Keller. And she said that the worst thing that being blind is being able, the worst thing than being blind is being able to see but having no vision. The worst thing than being blind is being able to see, but not have vision. And this is so profound. Actually, when I was preparing these notes, my little boy came and uh, she saw the name of Helen Keller, and she, uh, he saw the name of Helen Keller, and he told me, Daddy, I know this person. And I asked him, what do you know about, about her? He told me, she traveled all over the world, and she was blind. And I did not know that actually she was blind. I just bounced on this statement and I, and I loved it. And she says that the worst thing than being blind is being able to see but having no vision. With a clear vision, she continues to say, no ocean of difficulty is too great. Without a vision, we rarely move or we hardly move beyond our current boundaries. And this is so true. That sometimes we have been called fathers. We have been called men. But probably because of where you are coming from, if you are like myself, you are dispatched to the society without any deposits, without being able to have somebody to direct you towards your inner resources so that you can make best use of them and be able to redeem time. This is the work of mentors, to guide others and to help others redeem their time. I remember uh, my career path was not all that good because, like I have said, I did not know what to do. And I just went and I started pursuing a course in marketing and sales management. Hallelujah. Today I look at myself and I ask myself, where on earth do I really apply this? But the Lord has been faithful. Then after that, got employed. And um, as a salesman, 
And I began experiencing a very strange feeling whereby I did not feel contented. And I began to ask myself, where do I need to go? And I remember I resigned from that job and I went to another school and I pursued social work and community development. Look at this confused fella. I did not know what to do. But thank God because it was while I was pursuing that that I came across a unit called psychology. And I loved it. And that is how God spoke to me and I pursued that up to where I am. Don't I deserve a clap, my friends? You know, it, uh, <laughs> growing without a mentor, without somebody to, to guide you. I remember when I was preparing to get married and I went to my father, whom we did not have a very, you know, boys and their fathers sometimes. Those days, you know, maybe here we are good. But we, we were not very close. And I needed to tell him that I, I have found a girl to marry. And let me tell you, one of the worst things that I experienced is to have something that you want to say, but you don't know who to tell. And you, you find it, it becomes so hard for you to vent out what is hidden in your heart because you did not have that attachment. And I want to submit to us this evening. Fathers and men who are here and not married, soon becoming fathers, you know, the attachment between a child and a mother begins right from day one when they are in their mother's womb. And I heard Pastor Baby here say that as men, we get introduced to our children. Because for the last nine months, they were with someone else. And you know, they communicate. And it takes work. It is hard work for us men to be able to connect with our children. And especially boys, because Sigmund Freud says uh, there's something he calls Oedipus complex. And he says that for a boy and a father, they begin, the boy begins to see, they begin to compete for the mother, the two of them. And therefore, right from the word go, you are like an enemy to your son. <laughs> and therefore, it takes hard work. It takes work. Our attachment with our sons, it has to be worked for. It has to be cultivated. But <laughs> It is not easy. Now, ideally, a man is meant to know how life works. A man is at his best when he is mentoring. When he calls out the best from others. When he fathers the fatherless and ensures that the youth find guidance. That is the only way we can define you or we can call you a successful man. Because success in life, God has taught me uh, throughout the years. Success is not measured by the amount of money that we have in our bank accounts. Neither is it measured by driving the top of the rich cars. And they are good. I am trusting God for one with dimples. You know the ones? The, I am trusting God for one. But that is not what measures success. Success, and especially for a man, for us men, it is always measured by the amount of impact we have put on other people. Is there an amen to that? That when we invest ourselves in others. And I came across some interesting statistical evidence. 
And somebody by the name Bitsen Taylor says that 60 percent of children born during the 1990s, this is in the U.S., will spend a significant portion of their childhood in a home without a father. The research father says that 70 percent of juvenile delinquents come from fatherless homes. 63 percent of youth suicides come from fatherless homes. This evening, before I came here, I was interrupted, but for a good reason, for a good cause. Because I was called for an emergency to go and help a young man, 20 years, who had vowed that he, has, he must commit suicide tonight. And when I probed the father, I realized that this boy does not have a father. He has grown up um, with his mother, and it appears like they are not in good terms with the family, and he tells me that he has been rejected. And when he talked to his siblings to tell, him, to tell them that he is in crisis, he is suffering from anxiety, and he is having suicidal ideations, instead of responding in a positive way, they began to leave the WhatsApp group. You know, the WhatsApp group of the family. And he was left alone. And he felt frustrated. 85% of children with behavioral disorders come from fatherless homes. 71% of high school dropouts come from fatherless homes. A few years ago, I uh, conducted a study, a research, and I was trying to look at the, the, the research was trying to look at the influence of fathers, the impact or the influence they, ha they have on child delinquency. And I worked with uh, juvenile prisoners that committed maximum prison. And what shocked uh, I was shocked to find out that a child is able to understand the absence of a father because of death. They are able to understand. They are able to cope. They are able to spring back to their original functioning after that. But it was shocking to realize that it is very hard for a child to be able to understand the absence of a father for any other reason apart from death. And I know we are living at a time that we call postmodernism, whereby people are choosing. Our ladies, thank God. Uh, do we have ladies in the house? was able to realize that there is another lifestyle. And for lack of better words, I called it uh, a malicious belittling of husbands. <laughs> Do I have a witness in the house? You know, these, these are people who think that they are well educated, they have good jobs, they have enough money, and therefore they can just have a child with whoever comes their way and raise them on their own because they don't want to be commanded around, you know? But let me tell you, my dear sister, and if, you are, if we have a sister here, go and tell others. <laughs> that a time is coming. Na utajiwa hujui. <laughs> a few years ago, I counseled with a young man at Mathari Mental Hospital, a son of a very prominent person, uh, a very prominent lady. And um, we talked. And he told me, I blame my mother. The reason why I'm here is because of my mother. 
and I asked, Kwani, you know, I'm just, in, in my head, I am assuming we don't have ladies here. So, allow me just to say it. <laughs> that my mother, she's the one who spoiled me with money. And you know, because of the fact that you want to cover your absence, hallelujah, you think that money will work for you. And therefore, the boy, a high school boy, was spoiled with money, and he spoiled himself. He went into drugs because money was too much. The mother is not around. She is all over the world. And that boy got confined within the walls of Mathari Mental Hospital. May the Lord help us. Now, who is a mentor? This is so interesting. That a mentor is someone whose hindsight can become your foresight. Someone whose hindsight can become your what? Foresight.